Well, strike another victory for the neoconservative, bloodthirsty war hawks like John Bolton and, of course, the mainstream media that enables them. With the latest news that we're hearing right now, very disappointing news, with the United States announcing that they will keep over 1,000 troops in Syria, despite, of course, Donald Trump promising a full withdrawal. Now, if you remember, not so long ago, Donald Trump said, yes, we're going to take all the troops home. We're finally bringing back the troops from Syria, maybe even Afghanistan. And then Donald Trump wavered, got slandered by the mainstream media, got slandered by bloodthirsty war hawks that have lied before, that have caused horrendous human atrocities in this world, world, all based on lies like the Iraq war, the Libya war. I could keep going on and on and on. Donald Trump got hit. And then he, of course, he recoiled back and said, OK, OK. 200 soldiers at his speech in CPAC again toting the importance of America first bringing troops back he told us the great story about US general Raisin Kane and how Raisin Kane was supposed to do the job in two weeks how he told him to do it how he approved him to do it it's been far longer than two weeks Donald Trump even during that CPAC speech that during that very important speech that I was at said you know what we're just gonna leave 200 in there and then kept going on about the importance of keeping the troops in the United States and away from foreign conflicts. And now, just as of now, today, it has been announced 1,000 U.S. troops. Going along with the old saying, if you give someone a pinky, they'll take your hand, then they'll have your arm, and then soon they'll be bombing innocent people for no reason, sponsoring radical Islamic terrorists. No, I'm sorry, it doesn't go like that. But you get the drift here of what I'm trying to convey here. And surprisingly, I mean, I mean, surprisingly to everyone else except for us here, not surprisingly to us, uh, the mainstream media is not talking about this. Now let's get into some of the details here. This, of course, is new information coming from the Wall Street Journal. That is one of the media organizations actually talking about this. I've been watching Fox and CNN all day. I haven't seen any mention of this at all or any other kind of large publication talking about this personally myself. But essentially what we're hearing, of course, is everything that Donald Trump promised, he has completely gone back on. Continuing to operate along the Syrian-Turkey border, establishing safe zones, which of course Hillary Clinton wanted inside of that area, and continues to plan to work with the Kurdish militias inside of that region, of course creating a more difficult situation with the NATO ally Turkey on its border, which of course sees them as the total enemy of their state and their existence. Now, before we get into the bigger kind of geopolitical situations here developing with Russia and Turkey and the bigger kind of ramifications here, I do want to make the argument that this does not make America great again. This does not put America first again. If you look at the U.S. involvement in Syria, it started with, of course, support for rebel groups, protest groups against the Syrian presidency of Bashar al-Assad and his regime and his rule. And of course, with that, the United States, along with Turkey, Israel and Saudi Arabia, threw a whole bunch of money, threw a whole bunch of arms and also bought a whole bunch of oil, which has now turned out to be, hey, surprise, 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 radical Islamist creating the perfect situation that led to the prominent rise of the Islamic State, ISIS. And ISIS, uh, according to many experts, wouldn't exist if it wasn't for these big geopolitical blunders. Again, they call it blunders when everything is happening uh, by plan. Uh, you look at the war on terror, it only increased terror, and it does that on purpose because it's a monetary incentive. It's a business, okay? And lives don't matter. What matters is, of course, keeping a problem persistent so you always have that solution coming in, which, of course, is more military defense spending. And it's not defense. It's offense that creates the problem that it tells you it's solving when it's not. It's a big, cruel joke on you. Whew, sorry, again, off on another rant. Again, the, the whole being in Syria, they don't even they don't even listen to me. Listen to Donald Trump when he was running to be president of the United States. Listen to Donald Trump's off-the-cuff two-hour speech at CPAC. He will tell you, Donald Trump, the president who is making this blunder, will tell you how blunderous, how incorrect, how wrong it is, and how backwards it is, and how, of course, it's not making America great again. It's not putting America first again. It sure as hell is helping Saudi Arabia. It sure as hell is helping Israel. Uh, but, uh, again... 
Uh, again, let me get to the geopolitical stuff because the counterpart here, of course, is Turkey. That, of course, is the clear kind of loser here, as well as the Syrian government, as well as Iran, as well as Russia, as well as China, which, of course, are geopolitically opposed in this kind of proxy war conflict between what are really world powers. Really, what we're seeing here is the United States going against Russia and China geopolitically, with Russia and China support, supporting, funding, and aiding the opposite side. The United States been caught aiding the terrorist side, the rebel side, and now they're sticking to the Kurdish side. But that also creates some complications, especially with the safe zone that they're trying to set up, specifically a safe zone, which, of course, terrorists are using as uh, their kind of last bastion of safety. Uh, a big, uh, yeah, 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 this is happening with your tax dollars, which you should know, which the mainstream media won't ever talk about, uh, which is absolutely just ridiculous. Now, what happened here was uh, this decision came after Turkish President Erdogan got on the phone call with Donald Trump. And of course, this conversation went south between Turkey and the United States because Turkey always wanted to launch an offensive against the Kurds. And of course, now with the United States there, this is less likely of a scenario. And of course, this angers Turkey, which wants uh, and has their eyes set on fighting the Kurds, which they have been fighting for a very long time over, of course, cultural and other very divisive civil issues in that complete region. Now, of course, this withdrawal of troops that were supposed to be leaving completely was, of course, overturned. And now they're doing the complete opposite and sticking to the same stupid asinine game plan, which makes no sense geopolitically and only hinders the United States in many ways. And again, it, it's noted here, this decision was overturned by Trump's national security team. Again, Trump's national security advisor is John Bolton, who brought us the Iraq war, who's a bloodthirsty war hawk, who's a immoral human being, who ultimately is just, again, one of the worst perpetrators again we're talking about different kind of monsters and horrible people hurting other people john bolton should be the epitome of that there should be horror films about him and his atrocities and the horrible things he has called for and the horrible things he has caused okay that's how bad he is and this is the person that donald trump chose to advise him that's why we're seeing such asinine moves with again popular decisions that the majority of people want getting overturned by these asshats bumbling dust farting incredulous demons like john bolton sorry i'm getting I'm getting a little a little heated here and i should be and i should because this is stupid this is absolutely stupid because yet again now it's a thousand troops then it's going to be oh it's going to be an unknown number of troops meanwhile the united states people never even knew most of the people you talk to outside in the streets don't even know that there's U.S. troops in Syria. There was never a vote. There was never a public referendum. Congress never approved U.S. troops. It was all covertly done with a few assets, a few intel agents, a few agencies in there. Let's send the Pentagon in there. Let's send the CIA in there. Now it's over a thousand. Uh, no one, no one approved this. No one actually made an official announcement. No one said, hey guys, we're now going and having boots on the ground in Syria. Uh, where's the discussion about that? No, that's going to happen. That's a major decision that affects us in many major ways. Again, uh, the reason I'm so perplexed about this and so disappointed against this, because again, uh, there could be a lot of mistakes here. And with the world uh, fighting inside of Syria, because it's a proxy war, China, Russia, Iran, uh, there's a lot of room for mistakes. And the United States military, as well as other militaries, make mistakes other countries make mistakes all the time just like we saw recently with a u.s airstrike that wiped out allied afghan base friendly forces in an accident those these accidents happen and with uh you know the situation being as hyperbolic being as tenuous being as serious as it is there could be a lot of mistakes and people should understand that the world is closer to, the, to war than we originally think we are uh, especially with the disastrous situation unfolding between India and Pakistan and with the world becoming more increasingly wary of the U.S. global hegemony, this highlights a very important overstep of power that is continuing and is being abused and is ultimately leading to a situation that screws over everyone. Now again, some people would argue that the U.S. troops need to be there because this would usher in a new conflict between Turkey and the Kurds. And that's a reasonable, understandable argument that could be solved with diplomacy. And I do believe it could be solved because thinking the same problem that created it will somehow help this problem is, is, is not 
is, is asinine. It's absolutely insane. As Albert Einstein said, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. And with the United States predominantly being known for, uh, again, its US military might, when you only have a hammer, everything will start looking like a nail. And that's exactly the response we're getting here instead of diplomacy, instead of working out a greater, better geopolitical situation that could work out to the benefit of everyone, even economically towards the benefit of the United States, instead of us wasting so much money, so much of our resources, so many of human lives that don't need to be wasted. Now, again, there's some in the Joint Chiefs of Staff that deny this, that this is actually even happening that there won't be a thousand troops in there but again it's important to note here we don't even have the official numbers of how many troops are actually even in there that's still classified on many extents they give out some numbers but for a long instant of time people didn't even know that they were in there in the first place and the majority of the american public still does not know because of the horrible coverage by the mainstream media which of course we try to counter here as a real independent news organization that of course doesn't rely on special interest doesn't rely on sugar daddies governments or major political shills on funding we rely on existing because of your support and if it wasn't for you supporting us buying t-shirts like on the teespring stores which by the way the link is below we wouldn't be here and that's why i want to thank everyone for supporting real and independent media and being here a part of this broadcast we're doing three videos a day on this channel one on the main channel so don't forget to subscribe stay tuned for more here on youtube.com forward slash we are change